Hello, this is Vic. Welcome to my channel and thank you for viewing my videos. Today I'm in the beautiful country of Greece and I'm visiting one of the most historic islands of Greece, the beautiful island of Salamina as it is known in modern Greek or Salamis in classic Greek. Now the island of Salamina lies very close to the capital city of Athens. It's only about 20 miles away. I'm in the southwestern tip of Salamina and 10 years ago a huge major discovery took place right here where I'm standing at on this uh, hill here in Salamina. They discovered ruins of a palace from around the time of the Trojan War, around 1200 before Christ. Now before the discovery of this palace here, all the figures that were mentioned, Achilles, Ajax, Odysseus, they were mentioned in the Odyssey and also Iliad, the epic poems by the Greek poet Homer, they were thought to be mythical figures that did not exist. But what happened here really changed history once and for all. Now be patient, let's go for a tour of this excavated site and I will give you full details and you will see how history changed here in Salamina. Let's do it, let's go for a walk. We have so much to learn, so much fun and there's so much heat. Let's do it. Okay and uh, here's our very first glimpse of the palace of the legendary hero of the Iliad, Ajax or Aeas. This uh, site was excavated around 10 years ago and we are right at the tip of a hill in the southwestern part of the island of Salamis or Salamina as it is known in modern Greek in the very very far distance about 15 kilometers away is the coast of the Peloponnese the center of the Mycenaean world and here's the palace of Ajax or Aeas. So let's walk around. Now this site over here, this particular site where I am right now, consists of 33 rooms and it makes sense that this would be the palace because we are right at the tip of the hill. So the palace would be occupying the most prominent part of the hill. We're going to examine how the ancient Greeks, the Mycenaeans, built walls and foundations. We're going to look at them a little closer. Here's a variety of rooms. Now, Professor Lolos, that excavated the site, identified two ceremonial halls or megare or megara that belong to the palace. So let's walk around and look at those ceremonial halls. Right here. Here's the one very large room and just south of it another one right here. What a sight! What an ancient sight indeed. Let's walk around a little more so you can get a sense of how it feels to be in such a site. Now let's keep in mind that this site was in existence 800 years before the building of the Parthenon, eight centuries of the Parthenon in the Athenian Acropolis. I wish I knew what the function of these rooms was at one time so I could tell you but I don't have the information and I don't think anybody would know for sure. Now when you visit a site like this make sure you don't disturb anything. You'll notice I do not walk on the walls. I jump over them just like this one here. 
right there in the distance the modern resort town of Kanakia. So a very small portion of the palace has been excavated. There is more ruins outside this area. So this must have been a huge town at one time. Nobody knows how many people would be living here. Let's get another view of this magnificent place. In this very historic island here in Greece. Look at this. Absolutely magnificent. Now why is this site so significant from a historical perspective? It's not just because it's so old. 12 centuries before Christ it was built. But there's another significant element to the, to the discovery of this place. It is the only structure and complex that directly relates to the uh, epic written by Homer, the Iliad. A lot of people over the centuries have debated what is the Iliad, this beautiful war epic written by Homer in 800 or around 800 before Christ was really true. We know that the war with uh, Troy between the Greeks and Troy took place in 1200 before Christ and Homer wrote the famous epic around 800 before Christ. But was this just a tale? Was it a fairy tale? Or was Homer actually putting together oral history in his Iliad? Well, we didn't really know that until this discovery here just a few years ago. Because by connecting the site, the palace of Ajax or Aeas, directly with Iliad, now we know that the Iliad has a lot of elements of truth in it that Ajax and Aeas really exist, that this site really existed as well. So now we have a direct connection, a historical connection, an actual site that directly relates to Homer's Iliad and to the war with Troy. So the war did take place, Ajax did exist, and Homer actually did not just put fairy tales together or mythical stories, he actually put together facts four centuries after the war of Troy was put together. And that's a very important element in assessing the importance of this site here. Now there are no signs of war or destruction around this site. It looks like right after the Trojan War this site was abandoned and all the residents that used to live here moved and created a new colony, a new Mycenaean colony in Cyprus and they named it the New Salamis, the New Salamina. As a matter of fact, if you Google Salamis, you're going to find two places. This one here that belongs to Greece and another site in Cyprus. Now, how did the Greeks around 1200 before Christ 12 centuries before the birth of Christ, how did they build buildings? What materials did they use? What techniques did they use to build the walls? There's no better place to examine that than here, this palace, the Palace of Ajax in Salamina. Let's go look at a wall very closely. Come on. And uh, here's the wall we're going to look at right on the same site, the site of the palace. And when you look at a wall and the construction of the wall of an ancient site, you need to be very careful to distinguish it from uh, the materials placed on the wall by the historians in order to maintain the shape of it. And you can see here that the uh, teams that excavated the site have placed a couple of layers of rocks on top of a wall, therefore increasing its height, but also putting cement. You can see the layer of cement here and that makes the wall more maintainable and better preserved. So we need to go a little bit deeper. We're going to go to this area of the wall here which is the original wall. You can see what they have used here is granite, local rock. Very hard rock and the rocks here are chiseled in different shapes. They are really rough in shape, not square, not perpendicular, but they are placed on top of each other. 
form the wall and in between you find dirt it will be used as insulation here's a good view of the wall here let's walk around and let's look at more walls here's another good example this is not the era where the ancient Greeks would chisel perfect squares and fit them together. That's what we see in Acropolis in Athens. This is 1200 before Christ. The rocks are chiseled in such a way so that they fit on top of each other. You can see them here almost perfectly fitting into each other like a puzzle. And that's how this whole site has been built. Cement was not invented, of course. Cement was invented much later by the Romans. And you can see the same method used almost everywhere. Here's a very early wall in the complex of the palace. Same methodology here. You can see very narrow, thin, pieces of rock fitting into the wall to fill the spaces. Now I spent a considerable amount of time at Easter Island in the South Pacific and I studied extensively the platforms of the Ahu, A-H-U, the platforms where the magnificent Moai would be erected on. And around 1000 AD, the Marai or the uh, these platforms were very, very uh, plain in architecture. It would be just a bunch of lava rocks thrown together that would create a platform, and that's where they they would hold their religious rituals at. Around 1200, as the culture was evolving and as the culture was becoming more and more sophisticated, we see that the platforms are getting more complicated in design. We see the the uh, rectangular uh, form of the lava rocks put together very tightly, very neatly together to form fantastic platforms that would withhold the weight of huge, huge moai. The same thing has been happening here. Of course, we don't have the moai and the statues here, but the walls here, further away from the palace, show the same growth in sophistication and in engineering. Let's go for a walk and you will see exactly what I mean. Come on. And uh, once again, this is a complex which is further away from the palace, about 300 meters away and uh, from the palace and also away from the coast. So we're moving towards inland. So this is by far the newest part of the complex here. And look at the architecture of the walls and how the architecture really changes. Here we see larger walls, rectangular in shape, neatly put together. Here's a very good example. Let's go over here and you will see exactly what I mean and try to compare it to the wall we saw a few minutes ago in the palace. Look how large the rocks are, nicely chiseled and nicely fitting together. You can see this one right here in the middle of the frame, huge rectangular uh, block and actually there is something even more creative over here that we haven't seen at the palace. If we can walk around the complex for a second, you will see actual steps, rectangular blocks of steps right here. And you can see far more sophisticated design of the walls here. So these are much newer structures and a much newer complex. So if the people here left right after the Trojan War, around 1200 before Christ, then the palace really predates the Trojan War by a couple of centuries. And these structures here, here were built around the time of the Trojan War. There is a wall here that I would like you to look at as I'm walking and I'm trying to walk off the wall here so you can see exactly what I mean. As I'm moving further and further away from the palace, the size of the rocks, of the blocks, is getting bigger and bigger. Look at this one here. This one here in the middle of the frame must weigh at least a couple of tons. 
So this is exactly my point that this part of the complex dates closer to the Trojan War and the palace is much much older. Here's a quick view of the whole complex in the very far distance the tip of the hill where the palace is located at. Absolutely spectacular sight. Incredible sight. So we have been looking at this beautiful ancient site here in the island of Salamis or Salamina but we need to know a couple of things about Ajax or Aeas. Aeas by the way is the classic Greek name of Ajax. The Salaminian king that participated in the Trojan War. He was born around 1200 before Christ and he was the son of Telamon. He was really huge. Homer tells us that he was huge in stature. He was a very strong soldier. He was very brave. Of course the bravest soldier that participated in the Trojan War was Achilles who happened to be uh, the first cousin of Ajax and Ajax was the second bravest uh, soldier during the war. Now when the uh, Trojan prince Paris kidnapped the Mycenaean Queen Helen, of course the Mycenaean um, world here erupted in uh, kind of a revolution and, and against the Trojans and the Mycenaean war, um, uh, world contributed ships for the war against Troy. About 1,100 ships were collected all together for the war and Salamina contributed 12 of them and of course in charge of the 12 uh, the Salaminian fleet was Ajax. So now we know that this beautiful ancient site has been built right at the top of a hill and also along the slopes on both sides of the hill. But there's no wall, there's no evidence of a wall whatsoever to surround this site in order to protect it from invading enemies. Now one Greek historian said, well this area, this uh, complex here did not need a wall because the rooms are arranged in such a way that they are very narrow and the alleyways are very narrow as well so an invading army would have had a very difficult time attacking it and taking it and I don't think this is a very good explanation it doesn't make any sense because if the invading army had made it into the complex it would be too late to stop the army my explanation is and I think that's the most probably valid and logical explanation is that its location here in the southern western part of Salamina provides it with an excellent uh, view of the Peloponnese area right behind us. Now the Peloponnese area was the center of the Mycenaean world. If anything was to happen here within a few seconds by signaling to the main towns across the bay here to the Peloponnese they would have known that this place was in trouble or they would come and help it. And this is why there's no wall here. It didn't need one. If there was an emer emergency or an urgency and somebody was invading this place, within a few hours the Mycenaean army would be right here to protect it. And that's one of the best explanations I can give you why there's no wall. Now, as I said before, only about 700 square meters of this huge ancient site have been excavated and surrounded by fence to protect people from walking on the ruins. But if you walk along the slopes on the northern side and the southern side of the hill, you find evidence of more and more buildings waiting to be excavated. Here's a quick view of some of the foundations of buildings that are still buried under the dirt and these buildings are facing the modern resort town of Kanaka on the northern side of the hill. Just take a look. Here's the site of the palace behind the pine trees and surrounded by a fence. And now I'm gonna walk down the slope and towards the town of Kanaka. You can see here evidence of a building still buried and waiting to be excavated. You can see the foundation right there in the middle of the frame, but there's more evidence down here. Just follow me for a second. This would indicate that only a small fraction of this ancient side has been revealed and excavated. 
the buildings must go all the way down to the bottom of this of the hill on both of the slopes look at this one this is a very large structure over here you can see a very large room right there and there are more rooms and buildings next to it right here as well and everywhere that I walk around this hill I find more and more sites waiting to be excavated that by the way is the town of Kanakia you can see the beach in the far distance Wow it has been a real adventure getting here it is really difficult to get to this uh, site uh, you have to find it first of all from a uh, long distance and then you have to park your car whatever you have and then you have a very long walk uphill and it gets more difficult when it's very very hot it's about 38 degrees Celsius today yeah 38 degrees around 95 96 Fahrenheit for my American friends so this site really existed it had a lot of life and a lot of heroes about uh, 27 centuries before the discovery of uh, America by Columbus just to give you an idea how old this site is this is Vic thank you for joining me it has been a real pleasure learning about all these historical facts and taking you around and speaking to you about them all the way from the beautiful island of Salamina or Salamis the palace of Ajax as here in Greece bye bye